this first part of the presentation is non-technical, I'm not a technical guy, um, but it'll give you a bit of background in terms of what you should be looking for as police officers. I believe they're called clues in, in your game. But, so I'll, I'll give you some clues as to what you should be looking for to, uh, to actually bring these uh, cash and transit criminals uh, to court. Uh, my background, I, I ought to give you a little background of, to myself. I've spent uh, 23 years in the uh, cash and transit industry uh, working. So I set up um, post office cash go, as it was called, with a fleet of 600 trucks. Um, I then moved to Securitas, which became Loomis. And uh, as uh, ACC Cam was saying, um, spent a lot of time dealing with attacks. Um, CIT attacks, I'll come on to some of the numbers later, but they were horrendous, and I would actually say they were out of the con control at one stage. Um, and for my sins, I was the chairman of the BSIA um, Transport Security Committee, which uh, there were a lot of people wanted a lot of answers at that time, I can tell you. Um, so anyway, to the agenda, there's three key items that I, I want to go through today. There's the background to the use of forensic taggants. Uh, there's the various applications of, the, of those uh, taggants in the cash security industry. Um, and then, of course, finally, and perhaps this is where you need to really listen, it's what you guys should do if you, if you find these. Um, and it is pretty simple, actually. So the, the first item about the background to the use of the taggants, I'd like to go back again to what ACC Cam had said. Um, sorry. During 2006, there were 1,033 cash and transit attacks in the United Kingdom. That represented over, I think it was 75% of all the attacks across Europe. So the UK were at the top of the league in something but not a good thing, I'm afraid. Um, I did, just for one moment, imagine that. And I think the losses were probably around 20 million pounds. Um, there were cash in transit operators who were actually struggling to get staff to come into work because they were being attacked that often. Yeah, and these attacks were against it's not the companies, it's the people who were driving the trucks. Yeah, they're the guys at the front line, and they were the guys who were. Who were literally getting hammered. And a lot of these criminals are very vicious in the, the way they carry out the attacks. The majority of those attacks um, were across the pavement in the industry, that's what we call it. So this is where the uh, courier is transferring the cash between the vehicle and the customer premises, or on the way back. Okay. Of course, to do that, they normally use cash boxes. And you'll see some on display today. Um, so 80% of all those attacks were against those cash boxes. Now, because of the height of those attacks in the industry, and I, I remember myself, I, I was the uh, risk director for Loomis, I remember scouring the earth for solutions. We really were, because it was desperate times, yeah? We were struggling to provide a service. So, one of the things, and we did many things, but one of the things we did as an industry was introduce forensic taggants into the cash boxes. Because the cash boxes, and I'll come on to those later, but essentially what, um, what they have, they have either a smoke system or an ink system, and we actually put the forensic taggant inside those systems, or the ATM cassette, so that when they're activated, the forensic taggants actually go all over the cash inside the ink, so the smokes. And these forensic taggants are unique to that cash box. So it means that you guys now have got a forensic tool to link a criminal to the crime scene. And I've got to tell you, we've been very effective. So effective, if you look now at the, the prison sentences that have been given out through the uh, to criminals, where you guys have used the forensic evidence that we provided, a lot of these guys have been locked up. And it's no surprise, of course, because we all know in this room, uh, one great way of deterring crime is to lock people up. I'm afraid it works. 
Um, so by 2013, the level of cash and transit crime had reduced by over 70%. Amazing success. And I've got to say to you guys, thank you very much, because you guys caught, you, you caught the criminals and you locked them up. But of course, as we all know, these guys do come out at some point. Uh, and they either come back to the same crime or they go to another crime. And of course, ATM, gas attacks is, is just one of those, as we know. So, whilst we've done a great job, we certainly cannot sit on our laurels. We've got to keep continuing. And uh, as in most things, they come back to what they know best, these criminals. So I'm sure that, unfortunately, the crimes will start to come up again. So it's our job, collectively, to actually understand these crimes and remember what we did well back in 2003 to now. And let's keep doing that. We need to keep doing that, otherwise the crime levels will just continue to increase. I'll master this, yeah. Um, Bones down, sorry. So if you look at various applications of, um, of uh, cash boxes and such, the, the first one was introduced in the mid-80s when um, the industry was having uh, a hard time of uh, payments tax again, across the payment. Um, and they were introduced, I think it was around 1983, um, a company called Transalarm, we were actually now called Spinnaker, and they're showing uh, at the back that they have a booth. Um, they introduced um, smoke into cash boxes and very quickly the level of attacks reduced. This was particularly in London, um, I think Group 4, as they were then called, were a company that first started using these. So they were very, very successful. And also, as you'll see the, the picture of the banknotes, they are um, stained notes from a, a telly, because in the, um, a lot of the banks use telepacks, and they've got what appears to be real money on either layer. But inside, is a, the notes are cut out, and there's a smoke pack um, <coughs> embedded inside the, uh, the bank notes, which is activated as the criminal leaves the, uh, the bank. There's a sensor on the door. As they walk out, the, uh, the smoke system is triggered, and of course, they've got a bag of smoke, as you can see in the uh, photograph behind me. So th those systems have been used for, for quite some time now. With the cash boxes, in, I think it's 2002, there was an activation at a, um, a uh, pawnbroker's in, uh, in London, and these cash boxes actually went off. And it was an aberration, but the actual cash box itself caught fire. Um, and unfortunately, in the pawnbroker's, they had a sort of a, a grilled uh, counter. So they couldn't actually escape through the counter, so they had to escape through a cellar door. Their employee, their employer, sorry, had actually locked and chained the cellar door. And so the two um, ladies who were working there died in this fire. So very quickly, the industry, not, not, not everybody I've got, got to uh, say, but the majority of players, the big players in the industry, moved away from using smoke boxes. I mean, this was something like a one in 200 million or even more chance that this thing caught fire. Uh, it was an aberration. But nonetheless, clearly, the risk was too high, it was thought, by most in the industry. So they went away from these smoke systems, although there is certainly one country still using smoke systems in the UK at the moment. So that heralded, really, the, the introduction of the ink boxes. Um, and these are uh, very sophisticated pieces of equipment. Uh, as I said before, the, the ink in the uh, cash boxes is there to stain the cash when it's activated. But to do that, they've actually got to get through various layers of plastic. The cash comes in inner plastic bags, then it's got outer plastic bags. And it's actually technically quite difficult to get, the, to get the ink onto the cash. But they do a good job. And uh, there is around 20% ink staining is the, uh, is the standard that the box manufacturers uh, aim to achieve. And then, of course, not, let's not forget the ATM cassettes. And 
If you haven't seen them, this is what they look like, guys. It's an ATM cassette. There's normally four in an ATM. Um, smaller ATMs will have two uh, ATM cassettes, but the larger ones, which you'll see in banks, etc., they have four. Um, and the one on your um, left is an NCR cassette, which is quite common. And the one on your right is a Winco Nixdorf cassette, also, again, a common type of cassette. They come in different colours, but they're, they're normally about this sort of size. Yeah? So they're that long, that wide, and, and that, that tall. And of course, they carry the notes are stacked in the cassettes um, upright, so they can be withdrawn from the, the ATM um, automatic mechanism. These cassettes, in many instances, also carry ink degradation systems. Not all of them, but uh, some of them. And, and actually, that's a point I ought to um, get across to you. Because whilst I've talked about cash boxes in use for cash in transit, I've got to tell you, not every cash in transit company, uh, they, they tend to all use cash boxes, but not all of them actually use uh, ink or smoke systems inside them. So you get cash boxes which are, they look like the real thing, but actually they're not. So don't be surprised if you're doing an investigation and you come across a cash box that pretty much only has an a audible alarm system in it. You'll probably find those in, in what we would term low risk areas, but it does happen. So don't expect that you're always gonna have a a de cash degradation system inside that. On top of that, don't always expect that if it's got an ink or a smoke system, that it will have a forensic tag marker within the, uh, within the ink or the smoke. They don't all. And I've got to say, uh, I'm sure my colleagues in the tagging industry would, would agree, it makes our life and your life quite difficult sometimes, because you guys come to us with banknotes that are stained, and, um, you want us to analyze them um, for forensic markers. And of course, uh, they don't always have them in there. Much to your disappointment often, I can tell you. <laughs> <coughs> Joe from Smartwater is gonna talk about some uh, glued notes later. Um, this is a, a slide of uh, some glued notes where an attempt has been made to uh, wash them, to try and take out the glue. And what happens, as you'll see in this instance, is um, the, the actual notes, the, the colour starts to come out of the notes. So when you're actually, when you see notes, you should be looking. Um, they may not have any ink on, but they, uh, if they've been washed, as the criminals do, you will see signs of washing. So they feel different. Um, they look different often. The colour is perhaps washed out. Uh, and if you see a lot of those, then uh, that should raise your suspicions. You see the old one, well, okay. Perhaps somebody's left a five pound note in the jeans when they wash them. We all do it occasionally. Well, not me, but I hear people do. Um, but so be aware of that. If you see a bundle of notes that are like that, it's odds on they've tried to wash some ink uh, or glue out of it. So that brings us nicely on to uh, what you guys should look for. This is a photograph of uh, stained notes uh, under UV. And uh, you may see the, the colours of green and pink flecks are natural in the 20 pound notes. If you put it under a UV torch, you, you'll see that. But the edges of the notes are covered in uh, the darker ink. Uh, and Inside the edge of the note, you also see that they're, sh they're shining, actually. It's difficult to tell on this slide from where you're sitting, but under UV, they shine. Now, all the companies that provide forensic taggants also put a UV marker, which shows under a UV torch, of course. Different companies have different colours, and they'll come on, they'll tell you what those colours are later. We'll show you examples, in fact. Um, but if you see something glowing, a banknote with UV on it, then you should be definitely, this is definitely um, either from a robbery, most likely, or it could 
could be from a false activation of the cash flux. But again, that is unlikely because most of the um, false activations of cash boxes by the cash and transit carriers, those banknotes are sent back to the Bank of England and the Bank of England refund the, um, the cash and transit carrier by the same amount of money. They count the money, they destroy it and they send them a um, check basically. So you need to be aware to look for, um, for UV on notes. As I also said earlier, you need to be mindful that people may try and wash the ink out of the notes. And when they do try and wash out the, the ink from the notes, um, one of the first things to go, unfortunately, is normally the UV. And then you'll start to find that the ink starts to uh, disappear when they wash them with some harsh chemicals. But what normally stays in there is the um, forensic marker. So even though you might have a note that would appear to have been washed, it's often still worth having it analysed for, uh, for a forensic tagant. Because often the forensic tagant is still in there. You, may not be able, you won't be able to see it. Um, and cer certainly we and I know other companies have had some good results of recovering their uh, forensic tagant from banknotes that have apparently been washed. So it's always worth doing that. Note acceptance machines. Um, a bane of our life, really, because note acceptance machines, believe it or not, do not recognise a banknote that, uh, that has got ink stains on it. Those machines still recognise it as a true banknote, because they're not actually looking for the UV marker, they're not looking for the, um, the ink, and they're certainly not looking for a forensic tagging. So what the criminals do, and forgive me if I'm uh, teaching mother to suck eggs here, but some of you will be aware of this, some of you, some of you won't. Um, but for example, in supermarkets, the criminals that take a cash box, they will then sell the stained money for perhaps 70% of its face value. Because they're still going to, if they take a cash box with £25,000 in, 70% of that value is still all the money in. <laughs> um, then you'll have various teams um, wanting to convert that stained cash into something they can use. So they'll often use uh, the uh, supermarket self-checkout tills, so they might buy electrical goods, um, whiskey, expensive booze, um, and you see them with the trolleys full of this stuff, so it looks strange straight away. Yeah? And they'll pay with the stained notes, because the machines will accept them. So that's one method. Another method is they'll actually go to, uh, it might be a train station, um, and they'll, they'll buy perhaps a 50p ticket, rail ticket, and they get £19.50 change. That's not a bad return for your money, is it? <laughs> but they're not bothered about the rail ticket. Um, so you may get people who come to you, British Transport Police, um, bus operators, etc. And they'll say, well, you've actually emptied our ticket, our, our um, note acceptance machine, it's full of stained cash. Yeah? Again, that's a clue, there's something wrong here. Uh, and of course, you can then start to look at the CCTV to see who's been at the transactional level, time date stamp, put those together, and you've then possibly got a suspect. And then, of course, you can provide those notes to the forensic uh, tagging companies get them analysed, and we will tell you which robbery they came from. Yeah? No, no, th this isn't sort of 10% um, probability, this is 100%. We will tell you which robbery it came from. Yeah? If we can find, if the notes have got our forensic tagging in it, of course. If it hasn't, then we can't. Um, the other uh, favourite with um, note acceptance oh. machines um, you'll be aware perhaps that in betting shops uh, they have these fixed odd betting terminals. And I'm not a betting guy, I've got to say I don't think I've ever been in a betting shop. Uh, but I'm told that these machines you can, again they accept your notes, so you can put a thousand pounds in there. 
And legally, the betting companies have got to put a, a bit of software in there that's uh, in the machine that gives the punter the opportunity to say, actually, no, I don't want to carry on with this bet. So the last thing it asks you is, do you want to continue with your bet? If you press no, which you can, it gives you a little receipt. You can take that receipt to the teller, the, the man or the woman behind the, the, uh, in the shop, and they will give you £1,000 in clean notes. That's not a bad system, is it? Now, there's been lots of incidents where, the, where police officers who were switched on to this have, have, uh, have actually done some really good investigation work. One example, are we anybody from Kent Police today? I don't think so, but we haven't. Uh, DC Paul Walker from Kent Police, um, I think was this, this was about 18 months ago, um, he had someone, a bookmaker, complain about all this stained cash. He'd heard about forensic tags, just as you're hearing about it today. And so he actually sent some notes in for analysis, and bingo, they came up with a robbery. So what Paul did, he went back to the betting shop, he went back to the CCTV, because he could tell from the, uh, what time the notes had been inputted. So he's got this guy now on CCTV putting these notes in. Great. And we've proved the notes came from a certain robbery. Um, so then he, he puts uh, an alert out to his force and uh, to the London, the Met, to betting shops. And of course they get lots of similar stories. So again, he pieces this together, he sends in the notes for forensic analysis, they come back to the same robbery. And to cut a long story short, um, he actually managed to put away three criminals for I think it was around eight years uh, on the evidence of the stain notes going into one of these types of machines. And it just shows you how you, and these criminals are pretty horrible guys, that, like a lot of these guys, this wasn't the first crime, yeah? I think they'd just come out of prison from, an, from another job. Um, so it's, it, to have them locked up is the right thing. So there's another example of how you can, uh, what you should look for. Now then, if you went into somebody's home and you saw this, it's what you call a clue in the trade, as, uh, as you'll know, because bleach is one of the chemicals that criminals use to try and wash uh, the ink out of the notes, amongst other things. But this is a, a common type of thing. So if you go into somebody's home and you see lots of bleach bottles around, definitely <coughs> there's something going on, yeah? Unless they're really clean people, I don't know. That's one thing certainly to look for. Now, if you see this, I mean, hey, I think that might be a clue. This has happened. Um, in the Met, there's, there's been a few instances where uh, criminals have used literally school children to actually uh, snatch the cash boxes from the, uh, from the criminals. <laughs> and they then take it back to uh, a guy who does the washing. Yeah. And this is what they do. So they wash the notes using the chemicals and they put them out to dry. <laughs> so definitely something you, uh, you should be looking for. How are we doing for time for that? We're okay. So, to, to try and summarise on uh, what you should look for, uh, let's just go through these. Clearly, if you have an empty or discarded cash box or ATM cassette, um, it will, if it's got, if it's had an ink or a smoke degradation system, it will, for sure, have, if it's got a forensic tags in it, that's worth checking, okay? Stained notes, if you get Bank notes are either stained or perhaps they look like they feel like they've been washed. Then certainly they're suspect, and again they're worthy of having uh, test, having them tested for forensic tags. Um, if you see a lot of chemicals, like we saw in the uh, in the photograph there with all the bleach, then again um, you, you should be very wary of that. Criminals often they use a, a bathtub as well, so that they'll put the chemicals in the bathtub and put the notes in and literally swish them around to try and get the ink off. So if you see sort of uh, 
bathtubs that smell of bleach, again, that would be uh, perhaps an indication. Um, also, if you stop a car and it's got a tub of water in the back, a big tank of water with a lid on perhaps, what criminals, and they can, they've been doing this for years, they still continue to do it unfortunately, but they, they grab a cash box from a courier and they try to quickly put it in a water tank thinking that the, um, the degradation system will, be, uh, will work. I can tell the degradation system still works in those conditions, but this is what these guys try. So if you see a car that's got, you stop a car, it's got a water tank in the back, then that would be suspect for sure. Um, we've mentioned the stained banknotes in note acceptance machines, at supermarkets, betting shops. Uh, again, if you see that, check the CCTV, and you can often pull a case together, as was um, the Kent Police example. One last thing, before I move on to something else, one last thing is that um, when you recover stained notes, uh, and when we can prove which robbery they came from, that means we can prove who the owner of those banknotes are, whether it be G4S, Loomis, whoever. Um, police officers often ask us, how do they actually return the, the banknotes? Do they have to send them to the Bank of England first? Well, the answer is, if it's from a cash in transit crime, send them back to, um, to the cash in transit company because they have protocols already agreed with the, uh, the Bank of England to return the um, stained notes and get their money back. <laughs>